sure, sure, sure. housekeeping so you know judge I think I've got one other uh, demonstrative day to go through with the detective I showed it to Mr. Rodriguez I don't know if Mr. Uh, Kilgore wants to look at it real quick um, but after that we're going to be playing a, the video it's about an hour and a half long just so you, you know where we're at oh thank you so that'll be pretty soon that. yes judge I would say probably within three minutes of starting to rest again we'll probably get into the video if I can get technology to work I understand that. Well, then good. Then after we do that, we'll take a break and then we'll move on. Yes, ma'am. So that's a good heads up. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <coughs> Let's bring the jury in. Yes, ma'am. Joe, bring the jury in, please. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, Officer Piper, I uh, hate to do this as soon as you just sat down, but can you stand up so we can look at an aerial map real quick just to talk about these locations and where Cinco's was as opposed to Acres Mill and uh, Uncle Matteo's? Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to publish uh, what's on State's Exhibit 225 is located on this disc. Is, uh, it says O'Connor Harris Map 1. Okay. Now looking at this, I'm going to use the laser pen app now since the other thing did not work. Uh, generally, I tell the jury where exactly, uh, which location, which road you came up through to get to the location. Um, specifically on this map, once I came in from Cobb Parkway, I came in from over here. Okay. All right, and at that, lo at that time, um, when you say, we talked about Cinco's, looking at it as, as where it was as to Uncle Matteo's, could you show the jury, just point to them where uh, Cinco's is? Cinco's is the entire building here. Okay. And in this map, where would it have been located where you uh, actually pulled up 
and where the defendant's car was behind Uncle Matteo's. Um, if I understand the question correctly, it would be located behind us. Okay. So we would be located here, and Maddie, uh, excuse me, Cinco's is over here. Okay, great. All right, you can have your seat. Now, Officer Piper, we talked a little bit about um, the fact that you recorded this video, uh, or you, the, the video was recording in your car and things like that. Uh, did you actually obtain, or was it a, a copy of the video of your car, uh, patrol car, was it obtained by law enforcement? It was. Okay, have you had an opportunity to uh, review that and listen to it? I have. Okay, have you actually looked at a transcript of it as well? I have. Okay, and have you viewed a different version of it where the audio has been enhanced and it has, actually has the transcript uh, scrolling at the bottom? I have. Okay, and is that video accurate? As far as you remember, as much as you can tell, is the transcript accurate as well? It is. Okay, are there certain things that, that you actually could hear uh, on the, uh, that you cannot hear on the audio, but that you putting it in context remember what was said? I do. Okay, I'm gonna show you what a mark for identification purposes as states exhibits 223 and 224. Okay, Officer Piper, showing you states exhibits 223 and 224, asking if you recognize those. I do. Okay, and how do you recognize them? I recognize these. These are the, the video files that I reviewed that had the first, the unedited verse, uh, version with, um, and just that came straight from the, the program. And this is the one that has been, I believe, edited that has the subtitles and is a little bit more clear. And having reviewed those, it is fairly and accurately depict, uh, as far as the recording can tell, or can, can track it, uh, the conversations and what was viewable that day on your camera. They do. Your Honor, I would tender states exhibit 223 and 224 at this time. Okay. You're admitted without objection. And Your Honor, I've uh, loaded 224 onto the uh, computer screen right now. If we could have permission to publish and play it for the jury. You do. Okay. And uh, total, how long is the uh, video uh, the patrol video, counting all the dead space at the end. About two hours and 20, 30 minutes. Okay. Now let, let's make the jury happy, maybe a little happier. Are we going to play all that? I, you don't need to. There's okay. just gaps that nothing happens. Okay. After about an hour and a half, does it, does it stop where there's nothing else of note or anything relevant to your investigation? It does stop. Okay. So, Your Honor, I'm going to play it until about an hour and 30 minutes in. And Officer Piper, I may stop it in a minute or at certain points if there's something where we can't hear to ask you what was said to put it into context, okay? Okay. And now at the first, we're watching the video, it's playing. Um, does the, is the audio on yet or does it eventually kick in later? It kicks in later. How the system's set up is it's not mm -hmm. going to record any audio until... Um, the lights kick on, and then at that point, it's going to record audio. Uh, this is the pre-record, which I'm not quite sure how long that is. It's, it's just a few minutes before mm -hmm. the lights turn on. Okay. And what are we looking at here on the screen? This is the back side of um, Shane's. Uh, this is the building that's located on uh, Parkway, right near Cumberland Boulevard. Okay. And was that you running to the car? Yes, that was uh, me spreading out the, the door first. The other officer was Officer Alden. Thank 
captured on the audio since he was in the back part. It, it was. He commented that it was hot in the vehicle. I'm going to start playing again. All the way up.
got the answer up there and you can hear what your answer was. What was the question that the defendant asked you right there before you answered that question? His question was how long I had been in law enforcement. Okay.
exactly it was he said at that point. I don't remember. Okay. Oh, uh, it's about 12, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. Thank you, Judith. Right? Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take an afternoon break. Keep it up in mind. No discussion. Hold your notepads. Y'all have a good break. All right.
place. Any issues before jury comes in? Not here long. Bring the jury in, please. Yes, Thank you. Be seated, please. Please be seated. We're all settled in, so we're ready to start back.
Stop recording at one thirty forty two. All right, just a few other questions, uh, Officer Piper. <clears throat> um, first of all, during the time that he was in the car, he being the defendant, uh, you see another person walk up. Uh, not in uniform or something like that, but another law enforcement officer to speak with him at the uh, car door for a few moments. Mm -hmm. Okay, and who was that? That was Detective Stoddard. Okay. Now we went over and I showed you some uh, screenshots uh, as well from the video. Okay. Um, were those also on State's Exhibit 225 that's in the machine right now? That's correct. Okay. I'm going to show you those right now. If you don't mind just stepping down real quick. First, I'm going to show you um, what has been tendered as states 215 through 221. These are going to be pictures uh, involving uh, still shots of when you pulled up and the defendant walking across the way. Okay, just going through this uh, 215, 216, 217. Okay, now are those you, you said you noticed he was on the phone. Um, did he appear to be talking to you at the time? At this moment? Yes. No. Okay. Um, did he appear at any time to be talking on the phone while you were uh, at the scene? It appeared that he was talking on the phone. Okay. Looking at 219, 220, 221. Okay. Looking at those at any time, um, was that one of the, during one of the periods where you said he was calm? Or appeared to be calm while he was walking? That's correct. Now I'm going to turn your attention to, since you know this, I'm barely taller than you, so, all right. We should be still shots of the patrol car approach here. Looking at States Exhibit 211. Just for the jury, can you show them as you approach, uh, where is the defendant's vehicle? Just so they get some bearing before we go to the next photograph. This is the vehicle right here. Okay. 212. Can you see a little more in that photograph? I can. <coughs> okay. Um, is the rear passenger door open? No. Okay. Did you ever close that door? <coughs> I did not. Okay. And as looking at 213, what is this depicted over there? What do you see on the left by the car door that's open, the driver's side? That's going to be Officer Gallimore. Um, he's going to have his hands down. You can actually kind of see that by the coloration. Mm -hmm. Um, this dark figure right here is, uh, is going to be Officer Folia uh, facing towards the vehicle where Cooper is. Okay. And is that the same area where you saw the child, where the child was laying at the scene when you got out of the car and then later when we saw the picture covered with a white sheet? Yes, that's where he was. Okay. And finally, 214, is that just a closer up shot as you were moving forward uh, in a patrol car? It is. You can have your seat. Thank you. Officer Piper, um, do you see any, uh, the defendant in the courtroom who you referred to in this case as Justin Ross Harris? Do you see him here? I do. Could you identify him by what he's wearing and where he's seated? 
appears that he's wearing a white shirt, blue tie, and a dark blue coat with gold buttons on it. Your Honor, that's the record reflects she has identified the defendant. Okay. And all these uh, the instances, the scene that you responded to where uh, the child was found, and then again where you took it, uh, the defendant to where he was interviewed, are those all in Cobb County, Georgia? They were all within Cobb. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Judge. Charles is in. Judge, we'll need a few minutes to reconfigure the courtroom, I think. Can we just unplug this? No, don't unplug it. Officer Piper, you um, you were able to get a look at the, the video uh, before we came into court today, right? That's correct. And uh, the the one that we saw had the um, text added to it. Correct. Okay. And um, did you did you have a chance to see that uh, that text ahead of time as well? I did. Judge, if I just got to leave it, come and go. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, I'm just going to hand you that then. And that's uh, Mark Defense One. Does that look familiar like the, uh, the text um, that we saw up on the screen? Of course, it's in document form. Does that look like the same thing? Yes. Okay. And you would agree that is. Uh, to the best of your recollection of what we could hear and make out, that's the uh, that's the recording, the text of the recording that we just heard on your video. I do. Okay, I'll offer one for the defense. Any objection? Um, I just want to know for what purpose. Is he going to refer her to it during cross-examination for that purpose? Otherwise, I don't think it's admissible to supplement <coughs> what we've already seen on the video. And, um, I don't know why that would make any difference if, it, if she's identified it. It's already in evidence. This is just another form. The judge's video speaks for itself. I don't think there's any reason to admit it at this point. I... Well, we think there's a reason to because we want to use it for whatever purposes we want to use it, Judge. I'm allowed without objection. All right. So um, I just want to go over a couple of things that we heard on there then. Um, at, the, at the very beginning, when you roll up, is, is when we can see Ross walking back and forth, right? That's correct, when they make that turn. Okay. And um, uh, on the text, we see him saying, oh my God, oh my God, and then the screaming, right? The, uh, the oh my God, oh my God, screaming part, he had already walked off screen when, when we heard that, correct? That's correct. Okay, but, but your mic was able to pick it up from the vehicle. From the vehicle, okay. So or, it, I'm sorry, it could have also been my transmitter, I'm not sure. Okay, um, but the bottom line is you, you were pretty close to him at that point. That's correct. Okay, um, all right, and so then, um, it looks like real quickly you asked for his ID. Is that fair to say? Yes, that's correct. Okay. <coughs> 
then we hear the little tussle that happened, and he says, shut the F up, and hold on, my son just died. And then the really deep voice that we hear is, is Officer uh, Gallimore, correct? That's correct. You need to watch your effing mouth. That's correct. Right? And uh, one of those last photos that you identified, that was Officer Gallimore, right? Uh, the photo from my in car video? Yeah. That's correct. Okay. And Officer Foley, uh, Foley was with him. All right. And were they, w when you first rolled up, were they uh, attempting to do some sort of CPR or um, medical intervention? I believe so. Okay. That's what it looked like from the angle you were at. Correct. See, at some point, and this whole uh, th this whole thing that we saw at the beginning, it, it was really quick. It only lasted a couple of minutes, right? Before he was in custody, it was like what, two, like a minute or two, maybe. Yeah, he was detained. I think it was only like two minutes into it. Okay, it was pretty quick. All right, and so then if we we'll look toward the bottom of the uh, page, um, you say, "I understand. I understand. Who do you need to call?" And then he says, we need to call Little Apron Academy at Home Depot. My wife is going to pick him up there where he is not going to be. But we need to call them as soon as possible. She's going to get there, and he's not going to be there. And um, to the best of your recollection and what we heard, that was, that, that was what he was said, right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, and then you ask about why he's why she would be thinking that. And he says, well, I was supposed to drop him off that morning. I didn't do a second look in my car. I left him in my car. Um, you would agree right from the very beginning, um, I mean, Ross has acknowledged within a moment if you start to talk to him that he's responsible for this, right? Can you repeat your question, please? Ross told you almost immediately that he's the one that left his little boy in the car. He left him. Yeah, that's what he's telling me. Okay. All right. Um, All right, if you look down toward the button, this isn't paginated, by the way, so just the, the, the second actual piece of paper. If you look toward the bottom, you ask him, what time are you supposed to drop him off at daycare? And he says, around 9. And then he says, I swore I dropped him off. I thought I did. Do you remember that? I do. Okay. <clears throat> All right. You would agree that... Uh, <coughs> If you look on page three, a minute or two, uh, I guess actually maybe it's about three, it's maybe three minutes later, y'all have a little discussion and you and Folia um, are telling him that he is not going to leave the scene, right? Not at that moment. But that's what y'all were telling him. Correct. Yeah. And he said, I'm not going to leave the scene. Right. It's kind of in the middle of the page. That's what it says? I'm looking at it, yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, if you take a look, like midway through the, the next page, which is going to be page four, uh, is where it says 32, 3220. And uh, the text there is, God, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What have I done? My boy, my boy. Oh, my boy. And we, we heard that on the recording, right? Correct. Um, did you hear that? You weren't in the car when he was doing that, right? I was not. Okay. You know what happened because we saw it. Correct. Okay. He just didn't do it in your presence. That's correct. Okay. Let me go over just a uh, let me go over just a few things real quick from your. Uh, do you have your supplemental report yeah. with you? 
I do not. I'm, okay. Um, all right. Well, listen, let me take that back from you, and then if we need to get you a copy of your report, I'll get it for you. Okay. okay. All right, and uh, your report, do you recall it was actually, uh, it was actually uh, drafted on Thursday, June the 19th, 2014. Does that sound right? It does. Okay, so that would have been the very day after all this happened. I actually typed it up um, after my, during my shift, okay. right towards the end, so it was into midnight hours. Okay. And that's standard what y'all do. As soon as you can get it written written up, you can. That's what I try to do. Okay. Um, and at this time, you were, uh, we saw you in uniform, so you were you were still doing patrol at that time. That's correct. Okay. And you've been, what would you say, about two years at that point? Close to two years? Yes. On the video, I said two and a half. I think it was more accurate to say two years. Okay. All right. So um, do you recall in your report that you, you made specific note that um, I observed a, a white male in a red shirt walking aimlessly and screaming on his cell phone about his son being dead. That's correct. You indicated in your report that um, he stated he was he stated that he was really upset and I told him that I that I understood. But he was not helping the situation. That's correct. Okay. All right. One thing he told you was, or that you reported on was, he said people needed to be called and stopped. I asked who he needed to call, and you said he cleared his throat <coughs> and told me that I needed to call Little Apron Academy at Home Depot and said, my wife is going to pick him up there where he's not going to be and said but we need to call them as soon as possible she's getting to get there and he's not going to be there and you had that in quote so that was that was exactly what he said right correct um, but you made specific mention of the fact that he cleared his throat um, and when you say cleared his throat you mean like <coughs> kind of like that like correct why did you make specific mention of him clearing his throat? Because that's what he did. Um, it's like he paused to think, cleared his throat, and then that's when he gave that statement. Okay. I asked him what time he was supposed to drop Cooper off, and Mr. Harris did not answer the question. And he said, states that he swore he dropped him off. That's not exactly right, though, is it? He did answer the question, didn't he? He told you 9 o'clock? Um, I don't think he answered it immediately after that question. He, I think, answered it later or something like that. Answered it right away, didn't he? Well, I guess I made a mistake then in my report. I know I'd worked several hours. It happens. All right. Um, you you made note uh, of a couple of other things that um, we didn't hear about. You said that. Uh, you said that you spoke with DFACS, <coughs> so D, DFCS, that's DFACS, right? And that's, right. A, that's the state agency uh, that investigates um, uh, problems with children in the home. That's right? correct. Okay. Um, and you spoke with DFACS worker Devin Clayton Jones and gave her the family names and addresses so she could check DFACS records. Do you remember when you did that? That was at the scene. At the scene. Okay. Correct. Um, was was Devin Clayton Jones there? She was at the scene. She was at the scene. Yes, sir. Okay, I just wasn't clear about that. All right. Did you 
you get any records back? I was just there to provide her the information. testified uh, today and you testified previously that um, when you came up on the scene you noticed that Ross was left-handed. I did. Okay. And you drew that conclusion because he was holding the phone in his left hand? That's correct. Okay. Have you since learned that Ross is actually right-handed? I have not. Okay. You saw him holding the phone in his left hand a conclusion that he was left-handed and you testified in court twice that he was left-handed is that accurate hearing this now I think it would have been more accurate to say that he was holding his cell phone with his left hand you, um, you testified today that you found it uh, Ross's yell that we heard his scream that he found it kind of unusual and you compared it to Will Ferrell and the words you used were that it seemed real forced does that sound like what you testified to earlier yes sir okay. and um, that yell is actually utterance you ever heard from Ross Harris, wasn't it? Uh, that's correct. Okay. You, you, don't, you don't know him? That's correct. Okay. You never heard him yell before? I have not. You never heard him yell afterwards? Uh, just from reviewing the video. Okay. Um, but you've offered us an opinion that you just you just don't think that his scream fit the situation, basically. Is that fair to say? Based on other experiences with people in similar situations. Okay. Um, and, and since you've offered us that opinion, do you believe that his scream maybe it should have been a little bit softer under the circumstances? Honestly, I don't have an opinion on that. Um, is it fair to say if, if um, you, you believe that the, his scream seemed real forced, um, I assume it's your opinion that it, it did not sound like a scream of anguish to you? That's correct. It's my opinion based on hearing others in similar situations. You don't believe that it sounded like a scream of pain or actual role emotion, do you? No, I do not. When did you come to that conclusion? Upon reviewing the video. You agree you didn't put it in your report? No, we don't typically make cultural references in our reports. Okay. You, um, you testified about when he was uh, giving you some um, biographical information and he was um, using phonetics, spelling out the words for, for letters. Right. That's correct. And, um, and you found that unusual. I did. Okay. And um, you said that you usually just hear that. Uh, you said you usually just hear that from police dispatchers. Yeah, people with law enforcement experience. Okay. All right. And you you now know that that Ross has experience working as a police dispatcher. Yes, I've heard that after the fact. But when you first heard it, you kind of jumped to a conclusion that there was something awkward or odd or strange or not right about it. Is that fair to say? 
Yes, it was odd. Okay. You, um, you, you talked about his demeanor as being very calm. And is it fair to say that you found that unusual? I did. We saw a lot of footage of um, of Ross in the back of your car, and we've seen some um, pictures that kind of show where it was in relationship to the Tucson. Yes, sir. Okay, and um, you would you would agree that where your car was positioned in relation to his car, <coughs> uh, where when he's kind of uh, let's see, I guess it's on I guess it's on his left left side, sort of turned looking out the back of the window, mm -hmm. um, you would agree that he was looking or would have been looking in the direction of where his Tucson was. Is that fair to say? I, I would imagine he was looking at whatever is at the rear of that, that vehicle, which would include uh, his car, officers, their vehicles, um, and uh, whatever crowd had gathered. Okay. Police. Police. EMS. Correct. Fire was there. Onlookers, police tape. It was quite a scene. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, but the point is, that would have been the direction when he turned around. He was looking at that scene that was unfolding. That's is that fair to say? That's to the rear of the vehicle. Okay. So I think that's fair to say. Okay. You indicated that you noticed his behavior in turning around, looking out the rear of, of your car, <coughs> and your testimony on direct was that he showed no emotion. That's correct. Okay. Now, does that does that include the uh, does that include the part of the video that we saw where he was um, screaming out, "God, what have I done?" What have I done? What have I done? Oh my God, oh my God, what have I done? My boy, my boy, oh my boy. Um, does your opinion include that he was not emotional? Does, does it include that part of it? My report uh, reflected only uh, what I saw from the scene. Okay. Um, when I reviewed my video, I never even reached that point that night. that part that we saw where he was turned around looking out of the back of your car, you, you really weren't even in the car while that was going on, right? No, sir. You were um, attending to other, other business that you testified about? That's correct. Yes, okay. And so um, you then went and reviewed the recording, uh, and you've done a report on it, you've testified about it, uh, and your testimony was that, um, well, I mean, the bottom line is you, you, you don't think he was acting right, do you? That's correct. You don't think he was acting like somebody who just lost a child? Not based on my experience. Okay. You think he should have been crying more? I think it's unusual that he was not with his son. Well, what about screaming? think he should have been screaming more. Typically from, uh, I don't know if this has come up yet, but um, well it has, I worked as a 911 dispatcher. So I handle, I've handled calls where people have called requesting, uh, you know, an ambulance, CPR instructions. And what I typically hear is that it's, there's a lot more, there's, there's frantic, uh, voices, um, they're usually not separated from the scene, like what I saw. Which you typically hear. That's correct. <clears throat> not what you hear 100% of the time. Is that fair to say? Can you repeat your question? Typical. Not 100% of the time. 
I'm sure there can be exceptions. You would agree that everybody kind of reacts to things differently, don't they? I think a lot of people act similarly because there's an average there. Okay. But of course, I think some people can fall outside that range. You think Ross falls outside that range the way he was acting? I think he falls outside of a different range. That's unusual. privy to, or have you been privy to any recordings of Ross at the police department? Um, no, I don't believe so. I, I know um, I stayed after one of the motions one day, okay. and he was in an interview with some of our detectives, but I don't, I don't recall any of that information. I think I left soon after. Okay. All right. So, so if there was any um, crime and calling out to God and pulling his hair, Objection, Judge, to Mr. Kilgore testifying about what may or may not be him. She said she didn't see or didn't recall. I sustain the objection. You you told us that you um, listened to the nine one. You went and pulled the nine one one tape, and you recognized the voice. Is that right? That's correct. Who, who was that person? Um, I don't have my uh, supplemental in front of me, but that's it's the manager of Matteo's. Uh, I've ate there before. I've spoken with him, and that's why I recognized his voice. Okay. You don't know his name? It's been two years. This. At the time that you, you wrote your report in Four May's opinion, did you know what Ross did for a living by any chance? Uh, he said he worked at Home Depot. I didn't know what he did. Okay. Did you know anything about his level of education? Uh, no. You certainly didn't know anything about his personality. Right. You, you just met him right then. Excuse me? You had just met Ross. That That's day. correct. You didn't know about his personality? I don't know him personally. And you don't know if he's the kind of person that's stoic or the kind of person that shows a lot of emotions? You don't know that about him, do you? That's correct. And you certainly don't know how Ross deals with trauma, do you? No, I do not. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <coughs> reviewing that video uh, where he, he talked about where the defendant had turned around and was screaming or saying, my boy, my boy, things like that. Uh, was that about 32 minutes into the video? It was. Okay, and where was he facing? Uh, he was facing um, towards the, the rear view. Where the witnesses were? Correct. Did you ever see him yelling or anything like that when he was turned <clears throat> forward away from those witnesses? No. Um, Uh, additionally, we saw him not just looking at the back window, but the side window. Were there also witnesses to that side as well? There was. Okay. So it wasn't him just looking at the back. He was also looking at the side and things like that? That's correct. <coughs> um, going back to uh, Mr. Mr. Kilgore asked you several questions about uh, 
him with his left hand, having the phone up to his left hand, things like that. Um, were you familiar with anything about his, his uh, right ear, him not being able to hear? Oh, I had no idea. Okay. Even, even if he did, uh, you remember going back to that video when he started asking you about the phone and what you were looking for? That's correct. Okay. Now, he was in the back seat, right? That's correct. What was between he and you, the front seat and the back seat? Is there something, a partition in between? Yes, there's a plastic partition. Okay, and when he's asking that, what side, if I am him, what side of him would you have been on? Um, I would have been on his right side. Okay. Okay, and were you down in the car looking around for a phone? I was. Okay. At any point, did he have a problem hearing you in that car? No. Okay. When he asked you those questions earlier, when he was talking to you, hey, how long you been in law enforcement? Was your face to him? Could he see your lips moving or anything like that? No. Did he have a problem hearing you then? He didn't. Thank you. So, you're not aware that he's deaf in his right ear. You have, nobody's told you that? I did not know that. Detective Stoddard has not told you that? Um, I thought he, I heard something about maybe he had a hard time smelling or something like that, but that's all I had heard. I don't really recall. Nothing further, Judge. You can step down. Thank you. Call your next witness. <coughs> the state would call James Hawkins. Good afternoon, sir. Would you please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury by telling them uh, your name? My name is James Hawkins. Okay. And Mr. Hawkins, where do you live? You don't have to give us your address. Kennesaw, but, uh, Georgia. Kennesaw. How long you lived there? Uh, pretty much all my life. Okay. Uh, do you currently work? I do. Okay. And where do you work? With the Night Lights of Atlanta. Okay. Uh, how long have you worked with them? About three years now. And what type of work do you do with them? We do installation of lighting on exteriors of buildings and houses and what have you. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn your attention back to June 18th of 2014, okay? Um, <coughs> were you working at a location in Cobb County that afternoon? Um, Cinco's. Okay. And at Cinco's, um, tell the, the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what were you doing there that day? Well, they have their trees wrapped with Christmas lights, and we were just trying to figure out why they weren't coming on. Okay. Now, this wasn't Christmas time, right? No, it's just okay. the middle of summer. Okay. It's just decoration and what Christmas looks. Okay. <clears throat> At some point, and I, I'm going to turn that screen on a little bit. I just wanted to not mess with it right now so we can go ahead and get your testimony in the first part of it. Um, tell the jury, where were you? Um, had, had you? Well, first of all, had you guys finished up your work there? Yes, we were finished. Okay. Um, did you hear anything out of the ordinary? Well, we were walking back to the car, and I heard a car come in, break screech, and... Mm -hmm. Just yelling going on. Okay. And where were you when this happened? <clears throat> I was about the other side of the block, about a block away okay. from where the car was. Okay. And what area were you? Were you at a at uh, Cinco's or what part of Cinco's were you at? I was at right where the entrance of Cinco's is. Okay. It was just across the street <coughs> from where they had stopped. When when you heard this, had you been working with anybody uh, that day over at Cinco's? Uh, TJ. Partner, you know, we're there. Okay, and what's his last name? Pantano, Anthony Pantano. Where had he parked? He had parked on the other side of, I say a street, it's just the entrance into the area, mm -hmm. and he had parked over on the other side up near Acres Mill, I think is what that road is right there. <coughs> when you heard this and you heard the yelling, what, if anything, did you do? Well, I thought it was a fight, so I turned around to look, see what was going on. <coughs> what did you see or what did you first notice? Well, when I turned around, I noticed 
TJ and TJ running and climbing in this van and the other guy uh, climbing in the back seat of the van. So that's when I turned around and ran up to the van to see what was going on. When you ran up to the van, what did you see? Well, on my way up there, I saw uh, the man pull the baby out and lay him on the asphalt right by the driver's side back door. Did you know this man at all? No. When you got there initially, you heard yelling. Was he still yelling when he had the child out of the vehicle onto the ground? It was, as best uh, you remember. Yeah, some little off on, you know, it's more, uh, yeah. Well, how how would you describe it? Well, it was it was more it was ranting that you know she's going to kill me you know what have I done you know mm -hmm. and it was just going on and on about those same terms pretty much. Okay. When uh, you got up there, uh, what happened uh, when you got to the scene? Well, he had laid the boy out on the ground, and when he was fumbling around with them and. I got on my knees right in front of him and um, started doing CPR. Okay. When you say he was fumbling around with him. I, you know, I don't know if he was doing CPR. I don't know what the hell he was doing. It wasn't right, whatever he was doing. Um, so I just kind of moved him out of the way and started CPR. How long was he down there with the child that you saw? I got up there in a matter of seconds, you know, because I saw him, you know, I was, it was just a block away. so. 10 seconds, 15 seconds, maybe. And when so you I got, got there. when you got there, did you know this child at all either? No. How long was he on the ground by the time you got there before he got up, he being the, the, the person you knew very that pulled him out? Time. Okay, very little time? Like a matter of minutes or seconds? Seconds. When you got down on the ground, where did he go? Did he stay there by his child? He got up and just went this way, around the back of the car. This is all I saw. I wasn't paying attention to him, wasn't looking for him. Did you ever hear him say to anybody to call 911 or anything like that? No, I did not recall hearing that. Okay. Now, after um, the, the person who pulled the child out of the back of the car walked away to the other side of the car, what did you start doing? Well, I was doing CPR and did, you know, a couple of puffs in his um, mouth, and after the second one, I, I looked up TJ and, you know, shook my head, or, you know, he, he was gone, he was dead. Okay. When you say <coughs> um, uh, CPR, what type of CPR? Well, I was time? doing chest pumps, and, you know, do about five of those, and the breathe in his mouth, do about five of those, and after the second breath, it was, you know, there was nothing. I mean, it was blowing in a busted bag. It's calm. But I continued doing CPR until the you know, police showed up. Even though you thought all yeah. hope was lost? Yeah. Okay. Um, after uh, this happened, you said the police, did they eventually arrive? Yeah. Okay. And when they arrived, um, what did you do? I left immediately. And where did you go when you left? What well, I went and got in my car and drove home. Did you um, did you ever uh, stay to talk with the police or anything like that? No, I did not. Were you too upset? Yes, I was. All right, now, sir. I'm going to show you uh, a few pictures. <coughs> Actually, I'm going to do it on the screen here because I got to show you the aerial too. I'm going to roll this down for you, okay? <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
two, now I'm going to get right back out of that because it works better on my list. Okay, uh, Mr. Hawks, if you could just come down real quick and we'll put a couple of pictures up here. Just ask you to identify some places about where you were standing and things like that, okay? Okay, first thing, we're looking here at an aerial view of the area Cinco, the Matios, and things like that, okay? Okay, could you point to the jury just generally, where were you? This is Cinco's right here, and this is the area of Uncle Matios. Uh, where were you when you heard the car screech in? And then you heard the yelling. I was walking this way. I was parked right over here, so I was walking this way. Okay. And just which way did you go back up? I mean, what's kind of self-explanatory? So I turned around see. and just went right back across the street. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Let me go to another place. Okay. Okay. Looking at that, is this a scene of the actual scene? Um, looking back over here to the left, is that the same area you were talking about with the uh, where the parking lot was where you were walking? That's correct. Okay. And looking at this, when you talked about going across the street, did you mean that way from left to right on this photograph? That's correct. We go on to State's Exhibit 6. Okay, looking at the vehicle here, when you said he'd walked around the vehicle, <clears throat> You describe to the jury which way he ran around, the front or the back of the car. I just remember him disappearing around the back, back of the vehicle. Okay. okay. Now, looking at the vehicle here, <coughs> can you see the general area where the child was when you were performing CPR on him? Yes. Okay, can you just point it out where it is in the yes, picture right. there? And do you have any idea, I know you said he walked away and you weren't paying attention to him, on Stacey's Exhibit 13, do you have any idea uh, where it was over here he had walked or anything like that? I do not. Okay, thank you. You can have your seat, appreciate it. Mr. Hawkins, can you estimate about how, even how long it was that you were doing uh, CPR on that child or trying to save the child's life? It was, it was just a matter of minutes, just a very short time. Okay. The got there. During that time, could you describe <coughs> to the jury how the child looked as best you remember? Pale yellow. His eyes are barred up. You see the blood in his blood veins. His tongue was sticking out. Blood was coming down where he was written. His hands were clenched and just you know, straight up dead. Did you notice anything about him, about whether he was um, wet or sweaty or anything like that? I didn't smell like soil diaper or something. You know, like, something, <laughs> no, you know, just didn't seem right, you know. So, do you have any idea what it was you smelled, or just that you know, smelled it, something bad? This was unique, different. You know. And this was outside with outside the elements of the, the wind and everything like that? Correct. <coughs> Mr. Hawkins, I'm going to show you what I marked for identification purposes of Stacy Exhibit 51. Pan of Tano, oh, excuse me, Mr. Hawkins. Let me show you State's Exhibit 51, okay? I'm going to ask you to take a look at that and 
be read in that space as if, if you want. How do you recognize so, Next group. Is that a very accurate picture of how he looked when he was on the ground on the asphalt that day with you? Yes. You're on a tender, uh, ask permission to tender states for uh, exhibit 51. No objection. No, ma'am. Admitted. And you're on permission to publish. I'm not going to put it on the screen. I'll just walk it down. Hold oh. so. Okay. Thank you. said that you, uh, you got there and started doing CPR after uh, after you saw Ross trying to do CPR? Uh, that's what everybody was doing, yeah. Okay. You said you took, uh, you said two puffs and you, you knew the child was dead at that point? Yes. Okay. Two puffs are pretty quick. Yeah. You knew it didn't take long. You knew almost immediately that, that the child was dead. Right? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> we, um, we know that police got there very, very quickly. Um, how long were you there on the scene before you left? As soon as they got there, I left. Okay. So if they were there in less than two minutes, the entire time you were there would have been less than two minutes? Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, you were right in the middle of what was going on. Is there a reason why you got up and got out of there so quickly? Yes. What was that? Um, because a year earlier I had lost a daughter in an accident. And I was uh, highly upset at what just went on. Okay. Where had you been right before when, when you were coming out there to the scene? When you heard the screeching, where are you coming from? We were in the, working at the restaurant right across the street from okay. the yard. Okay. Were you working or were you having lunch? No. <coughs> okay. Were you with Mr. Pantana? Yes. Okay. Did y'all ride together? No. All right. Did you go back to work that day? No, I went on. Okay. It was the end of the day. All right. You never called the police about this, did you? No. When's the first time you picked up the phone and called somebody about this? I didn't call anybody. They called me. Who called you? Um, the DA's office. When did they call you? I don't know. It was well, a while after. Was it this year, 2016? No, it was, no, it was, it was last year. They called you in 2015? I think so, yeah. Okay. You remember what, what part of the year they called you in? No. All right. Has it been more than a year ago? Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, it was, you know, it was not long after it had happened, so I guess it's been two years now. Okay. And um, did you, uh, were you asked to come in and make a statement to the district attorney's office? Not immediately, no. Were you ever asked to come in and make a statement to the district attorney's office? I was. Were you ever asked to come in and make a statement to the police department? I was not. And um, was it these nice fellows here that you met with when you went into, into the DA's office? It was. Okay. Did you go by yourself? I did. And the uh, um, colleague that you were there with, um, Anthony Pantana, is he here today? He is. Okay. And you would agree that y'all got to the scene at the same time? 
No, he got there before I did. Was he doing CPR? No. What was he doing? He was just, just right up at the head of the baby. He wasn't really doing anything. You, uh, well, uh, when you say head of the baby, you mean when, when the child was on the ground? Correct. Okay. Did, did you ever see Mr. Pantano um, get in the car or in any way help help Ross get? Uh, yeah, when I first out? turned around, I saw him, TJ jump in the van. That's what made me turn around and run back over there. Is when he climbed in the van, I knew something was going on. Okay. So I went over there. And did he climb in the back seat? Front seat. He climbed in the front seat. And was Ross in the, the back seat, mm -hmm. the passenger side? Correct. And from the angle that you had, did it, did it look like your friend, um, uh, TJ, did it look like he was kind of leaning over um, the front seat to just to try to help get Cooper loose that's from the... Remember, yes. That's what it looked like? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then Ross put him on the ground, tried to do CPR, did, didn't do good, got up, walked away, and then you tried to do CPR, two puffs, you realized that the child was dead. Is that right? Yeah, but continued doing the CPR until the okay. cop got there. Okay, which? It was not long. Not long? Right. Maybe maybe a minute? It was a little longer than that, probably. Okay. Less than two minutes? No. Dude, I was concentrating on the dead baby. I wasn't worried about the time. Okay. And you made no call? Let <coughs> me... Let me back up. You knew that your friend TJ had made a statement to the police, right? Correct. I mean, because he told you about it. Correct. Okay. And um, you just decided you weren't going to... Yeah, I decided they were going to call me. I knew they would. And about, about a year or so later... I don't think it was a year later since they talked, you know, I, you know. It wasn't long afterwards. Okay. I believe the way you, you put it was you said he was ranting and the, to the best of your recollection um, what he said was what, what have I done what have I done so, something to that effect yeah and she's gonna kill me she's gonna kill me <coughs> did you um, have you ever done any kind of a written statement for anybody I have not okay You've been watching coverage about this story on, on the news? I have not. You read any stories about it in the newspaper? No. Nope. How'd you know Cooper's name? Well, it, it immediately came out, you know, when the, you know, that night they were giving it out. So. On the news? Yeah. So you have watched news stories about Well, yeah, when it first came out, you know, it was just all over every form of media. Couldn't turn anything on and not hear something. Okay. Did you see any coverage of any court proceedings? No. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nothing further, Judge. Excuse. <coughs> Next witness. State would call Andy Pantano. Judge, may we approach this briefly?
good afternoon. Would you please introduce yourself to uh, the ladies and gentlemen of the jury by telling them your name? Anthony Fantano. And I've been forgetting to do this with the other witnesses, but can you please spell it so the court reporter gets it right? Yes, sir. Last name is P-A-N-T-A-N-O. And Mr. Pantano, uh, do you go by any nicknames? TJ. Okay. And Mr. Pantano, where do you live? Canton, Georgia. Okay. Uh, where do you work? Uh, Nightlights of Atlanta. And is that your business? Yes, sir. Okay. What type of work do you do? We do landscape lighting, outdoor lighting. Okay. How long have you been doing that type of work? 16 years. <clears throat> Back in, uh, Ju on June 18, 2014, what, uh, what type of work were you doing that day and where were you? Uh, we were at Singo Restaurant and we were um, lighting their trees. We will wrap the trees with lights to give it um, the, the palm tree look, if you will, I guess. When you were, uh, when you were doing that, did you guys, you, who was working with you? James Hawkins. Did you guys eventually finish up that afternoon and yes, finish the job? Yes, sir. Okay. Where had you parked your vehicle? My vehicle was across the street from uh, Cinco, behind Matteo's Pizza Restaurant. And what type of car were you driving? Uh, GMC van, yellow van, 1500. What uh, did James drive with you or did he drive separately? James had drove separate that day. Okay. And what area had he parked in? He parked in Cinco's parking lot. When you uh, were there about to leave, uh, did you hear anything or notice anything? As I was getting in my vehicle um, on Acres Mill Road, I heard some tires screeching. Okay. And what happened when you heard that? Uh, I paused for a moment to see. I expected there was probably going to be some form of an accident because there's a traffic light up there. So I, mm -hmm. I waited for a moment and then I didn't hear anything. And then a uh, car came around the corner at that point in time. And at that point, I had stepped out of my van and started walking towards the back of it to see what was going on. Okay. When you started walking toward the back of it, what did you see or hear? At that point, um, I noticed that there was a vehicle there, and I just heard screaming at that point. Okay. Do you remember what it was you heard screaming, or just you heard screaming? I just heard screaming. There was nothing specific that I heard. When you heard this, what did you do? Ran over to the vehicle to see what was going on to see if I could help. <coughs> when you ran uh, to the vehicle, which side of the vehicle did you go to? The I passenger went, or driver's side? I went to the driver's side. When you got to the driver's side, uh, what did you see? At that point, I had gotten into the driver's seat with my back to the steering wheel and was looking into the back seat of the vehicle. And what did you see at that point? And did you have any conversation? At that point, I saw the defendant um, trying to unbuckle the uh, car seat at that point in time. And I asked what was wrong, what was wrong. And he had stated that he had left the child in the car. Um, at that point, was he able to unbuckle the child? Yes, sir. Okay. How long were you in that car? A few seconds, five seconds. Okay. Let me ask you this. Um, during that time, the, the brief time you were in there, do you remember smelling anything? No, sir. Okay. Is it possible at the time you did smell something and you don't recall it or you weren't paying attention to it? He's answered the question that he did smell anything. And now Judge, that's a, to speculate. Is it possible he might have smelled something even though he said he didn't? I'm allowed up objection. Thank you. And let me ask this different question. Um, is it possible at the time that there was a smell in there and you did not notice it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, when you got out after that brief time in there, where did you go or what did you do? At that point in time, I, as he had unbuckled the, the seat and got the child, I stepped out of the driver's seat and stepped to the back uh, passenger seat as well, or driver's side rear, and um, helped him lower the child to the ground. And <clears throat> where was the child put? Uh, right there next to the car on the captain driver's side. Now, after, did you ever close any doors on this car or anything? No, sir. Okay. At that moment, um, did you ask the de or say anything to the defendant? Um, I asked him if he knew CPR at that point in time. Okay. And how did he respond? Uh, he said he did. Okay. And at that point, I told him he needed to focus and we needed to try and help the child. Okay. Had he, before you told him, or said, brought up CPR, had he done anything of that nature? No, sir. Okay. Did he attempt to do something? No, sir. Okay. Um, at some point, do you remember him briefly trying to do CPR? Yes, after I asked him if he knew CPR and told him to focus, he had done a couple of chest compressions, I would say, and 
I believe he had done one breath to, and to, to try and, you know, put CPR. And at that point, um, where are you situated? I was uh, kneel, knelt down um, at the child's head. After that, uh, how long was he there doing it? Would you say as a matter of minutes or seconds or something else? Seconds to do, best of my recollection, seconds to, to do a couple chest compressions in one breath. And at that point, he, he stood up and walked away. Now, after that, <coughs> um, and he walked away, did you, um, what did you do, and who else was there at the, at the child? At this point, um, it, you know, people had started to recognize that something was going on, so a manager or somebody from Matios had come out of the, the pizza restaurant, and I looked at them and told them to call 911. Um, at that point, there was, you know, other people that were gathering around us. Uh, a lady was walking towards me as well, and I could tell that she was on the phone. I knew she was with 911 because I could just tell from her conversation. And also at that point in time, she was in the vicinity of where James was parked, and I had looked in that, that direction and kind of made eye contact with James. Mm -hmm. And he recognized that I, I needed his help at that point. Now, did James actually come over and try to help resuscitate the child? He did, yes. He did a couple of chest compressions as well. And um, he had done a breath, and at that point we kind of looked at each other and knew that the child had passed. There was nothing we could do. Did uh, <coughs> James, was, did he seem upset about this? He was extremely upset about it, and you know, at that point in time, the police had arrived, and James just looked at me and said that he couldn't be there, he had to go, he needed to leave, and I told him that was fine, I would take care of talking to the police at that point in time. Did you actually give us, James, information later when you came in and talked to us? Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> after the defendant walked away, did you, I know, was your attention focused on him or the child? Uh, it was in my peripheral vision, but, you know, again, I'm still pre pretty focused on the child. And where was he as opposed to where the child was? Um, I would say, you know, three to five feet away from the child to the, to the left of us. Okay. And where was that? On, uh, around the car? It was around the um, back side, on the passenger side of the, of the vehicle. Okay. And do you remember what, if anything, he was doing on the other side of the car? He was on, he was on his phone trying to make phone calls. Okay. Uh, do you know if he ever connected or made a phone call? It appeared as though he did. Uh, you know, at that time the police had come, mm -hmm. I believe, and at that point it looked like he was in conversation on the phone. Now, did he ever call 911? Not did that you ever hear At some point, were you there and did you hear uh, or see the defendant get into a conversation with the police? Yes, sir. Could you tell the jury what you remember about that situation, what you observed um, or heard? As I was initially there, um, and by the time the police had come, I had stepped away and saw, you know, just was observing at that point in time, and he was in conversation with the police. Initially, he seemed pretty calm, and it seemed like he got whether agitated or a little bit more upset at that point in time, they unrecognized him, they handcuffed him and put him in the back of a police car. At any point during that time, did you ever see him crying or anything? Anything no, of that nature? Um, did he ever come while you were with the child and come back and ask to be with the child or ask to hold the child or anything like that? No, sir, not that I recollect. While you were there at the scene, um, did you notice him in the back of the patrol car? Yes, sir. Okay. And how long were you out the scene? A short time or a long time? I was there a long time. I was probably there over an hour, I believe, from the time it happened to the time the police released me, so it was probably more than an hour. During the time you saw him in the back of the patrol car, <coughs> could you describe his behavior as far as you observed it? Uh, it was that he was, the police car was faced away from the scene, so he was in the back seat and he would turn his turn to the side and, and stare out the back of the window and most of the time he was calm and then at, at times I would hear him screaming. I mean I don't know what it was that he was saying or whatever, but it was just, you know, a little bit of both well, observe, watching what was going on and then screaming at the same time. So would these be different times that he would be screaming like he would be normal and calm and then scream and then go back to the other way? Yes, sir. And when he would be screaming uh, or whatever he was doing, um, was he looking at what was going on around there, at the witnesses and the, where the police officers were and the witnesses were? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you ever see what he was doing when he would turn around back to the front? 
or did you even have that viewpoint? I did. He, he would just stare out the front of the, the vehicle, it looks like. Uh, Mr. Pantano, uh, <coughs> did, did his behavior, uh, from what you observed, appear, appear consistent with somebody that had just observed their child dead? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to object to that, Judge. Um, that's just an asking for an opinion. I'm just going to object to that. Argument? I think it's a lay opinion that he's allowed to give whether it's consistent or inconsistent. He's not giving an opinion on whether uh, a veracity or anything like that. I'll allow well, it over objection. Yeah. I'm sorry. I had wanted to respond, Judge, but you, you ruled. Uh, I could put some on the record later if you need. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Did it appear consistent or inconsistent with somebody who had just put their pulled their child dead out of a car from no. everything you personally observed? Not personally, no. I, I don't. For me, I mean, it was, I guess I could only relate to the fact if it was my child dead. Mm -hmm. I don't. I would have been, you know, more upset. I believe and don't think I would have left my child. Period. Um, I showed you some pictures previously. Uh, Mr. Pantano, I'm going to roll this big screen out again. We've been doing this all day, so just give us a second. So I had to cancel it before it shut off and we had to go through that again. All right. Uh, Mr. Pantano, I'm going to show you uh, some photographs. Do, uh, I'm showing you this disc 225. Did I say you show you some photos of the crime scene uh, back in the office that you identified as being fair and accurate and photographs that would help you describe to the jury where you were situated and things like that? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> I ask you to just step down for a minute, if that's okay. Now, looking at uh, what's labeled O'Connor Harris Map 1 on State's Exhibit 225, uh, does this ma uh, map depict the area that all of this occurred generally? Yes, sir. Okay. First of all, could you show the jury um, just generally where was your work vehicle parked that day? Approximately right in the first spot here. Okay. Here on the first spot on the left of the, uh, the parking, or the, on the left of the screen. Correct. Okay. Uh, where is Cinco's and where were you working around that day? Um, this is Cinco's here, the restaurant, and then we were working in these trees and along these trees, um, putting lighting within the trees. Okay. And generally, where was the area that the car pulled in that you saw and went to the tent to? Uh, it's approximately right here. Okay. <coughs> All right. Let me go to some other photos now. Looking at States Exhibit 3, Looking at that, is that the, a general overview of the scene coming in from Acres Mill? Yes, sir. Okay. Going to States Exhibit 6, uh, when you said the defendant came around the rear of the vehicle, uh, which side did he go after uh, he left the child? He walked from this side over to here. Okay. Now showing you States Exhibit 11 on, uh, well, excuse me, yeah, States Exhibit 11 that is published on States Exhibit 225. Um, looking at this right side of the photograph, uh, what do you see there? Um, that's my van, and I'm talking to the security guard of the uh, complex at that point. Okay. <coughs> and is that where your van was parked initially, or had you moved it after the police showed up? I had moved it once the police had showed up. Okay, now in this photograph, uh, where were you, is it depicted where you had originally parked your van? Yes, sir, it's right here. Now looking at uh, state, uh, States 19, which is shown through States Exhibit 225, um, could you identify for the jury where the child is? Is the child located in that photograph? Yes, sir, right here. Okay. And you stated that you got in the front door. That is that the door that's open there, the driver's side door? Yes, sir. All right. 
And again, when you got there, the back door was open, but you did not shut it, correct? Correct. And finally, we go to... Going into the same exhibit to... States 215. Okay, looking at this <coughs> vehicle uh, in that photograph, whose vehicle is that? That's mine. Okay. And is that in the space, backing out of the space that you had parked that day? Yes, sir. Thank you. Come down your seat. Murphy, your interview? Yes, sir. Did you have a chance to review that? I did, yes, okay. sir. Thank you. I appreciate you doing that. Um, so I should be able to go, go through this with you pretty quick with you here. Um, when, um, when you spoke to Detective Murphy, uh, was it within a couple of days of this, uh, this happening? I believe so, yes, sir. Okay. And it was a phone interview? It was, yes, sir. I had given an interview while I was there okay. and then a follow-up on the, with the phone call, yes, sir. Let's see. Um, you told Detective Murphy that you, you heard loud screeching tires, uh, that you heard screaming, and um, and then that you were you got in and were leaning over the back seat trying to unbuckle the car seat. I was not trying to do the unbuckling. The defendant was already in the process of trying to unbuckle the, the seat itself. Ross was trying to do the unbuckling. Yes, sir. Okay. You were in the front seat, kind of leaning leaning over trying to help or see what was going on? Correct, yes, sir. All right. And, and from the time that you heard the screeching till the time that you got in the car, <coughs> and that was just a couple of seconds? You know, 30 seconds approximately. Oh, okay. From, from so the you, time that I heard the initial screech of the tires up there on Acres Mill until by the time it came around the corner and again heard some the, the tire screeching because the car, car stopped quickly by the time I come around. So, yes, sir, about that, about that long. And, um, the, you said you heard screaming. Uh, do you remember at that at that juncture? Was it any particular words, or was it just screaming? Uh, just screaming. I, did, I didn't recall any specifics. All right. Um, you told Detective Murphy that you heard, heard Ross continuously saying, "I left him in the car." When I initially had gotten into the car, yes, sir. I asked what what happened, what's going on, and he had stated at that point in time, "I left him in the car. I left him in the car." Okay. He was answering your, your question to him. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, um, you told Detective Murphy that um, Ross laid him on the ground and that Ross was frantic. Remember that? It was, uh, my recollection was that he was frantic on trying to unbuckle the seat belt and we had laid him down together at that point in time. Okay, you told him that Ross tried to, leave, to, to do CPR for a minute or two, but just couldn't focus. Does that sound right? Sounds accurate, yes, Okay. And when you say, when you were telling the detective that he couldn't focus, um, do you mean that he just, he was so emotional that he couldn't do it, or was just so discombobulated that he could? Just, there wasn't, there wasn't really a lot of emotion. I mean, everything kind of happened pretty quick. I, you know, I had asked him again to focus and, and try to CPR after a couple of chest compressions, and I think that like I said, he tried to, you know, do the breath one time, and at that point in time, he 
just kind of stood up and walked away. Okay. Well, you use the word emotion. Do you remember, in fact, that you specifically told Detective Murphy that Ross was emotional? Um, he was certainly emotional when I got to the car initially, yes, sir, trying to unbuckle the, the seat belt during the time of the CPR. Um, there, was, there wasn't a lot of emotion at that point. It seemed like we just kind of, we were, again, trying to focus on what and if there was anything we could do for the child. Certainly at that point, he stood up and walked and had said, you know, I can't believe what I had done. And there was some, again, some emotion there. And this was a very sort of frantic, intense couple of minutes. Yes, sir. Right. So if, if, you, if, you, if you use that word and told Detective Murphy that Ross was emotional, that would certainly fit with sort of the frantic nature of what was going on? Yes, sir. You, um, and, and I think your, your recollection is really good. Um, but you, what you told Detective Murphy was, uh, he just kept saying, I can't believe I did this, I can't believe I did this. Yes, sir. And that's what you remember? Yes, sir. Okay. Y'all weren't exactly carrying on much of a conversation? No, sir, we were not. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Payne. Yes, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Nothing for the judge. You're free to go. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we'll recess for the day. We'll close the notepads. Now, let's have a little bit more of a conversation about behavior. This bailiffs are not going to be all the way around embracing you all. So, let's just remember it's critically important. If you break one of these rules, we're going to have to stop the trial. Pull folks out, take testimony, find out what's going on. You don't have to raise your hand, but is there any one of you that really wants that to happen? I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen to you all. It's no fun. I've done it. It's no fun at all. And it's not where we need to spend our time. We need to spend our time in this courtroom <coughs> having the evidence presented to you, the jury, so that you can do your task and do your job. So, what are the rules? Keep an open mind. It's important and critical to the fairness of these proceedings that you keep an open mind. And you're going home for the evening, just stop your brain. If you can do it, just stop your brain. Take a break. Take a break. Okay. No pace. Close them up. Leave them in your jury room. They'll be there for you in the morning. They'll be under lock and key. Do not speak to each other about the case. I want to emphasize that. Just even something as, as frivolous as uh, whether you like some lawyer's tie, you know? Whether you think I'm looking good or bad, whatever. I don't know. Anything. You can't do it. You just cannot do it. You just cannot do it. And this can be a time waster, so be careful. Um, others, you know the rule. It's just off limits. You do not speak to others or let others speak to you about the case. Just go home and go, la, 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 la. I'll listen about your day. I can't talk to you about mine. Uh, social media, no, not about this case. And certainly you can, you know, I mean, I'm gonna go home and email my mother and say I'm now here and <laughs> I think the weather's gonna get bad. And then I'll probably pick up the phone and say, mom, I'll be fine, you know? <laughs> That's what we do with our mothers. That's okay. Uh, but I'm not going to call my mother and say, guess what's going on in court today. So y'all don't do that. And don't let anyone else do that with you. You know, bubble wrap. We're going to do bubble wrap. Um, anything that you can think of to get information about this case, don't do it. You're going to hear the evidence under the, under the rules of law. And the reason we have to follow the rule of law because that guarantees that the quality of our work is that high quality we've talked about. It guarantees that we have followed the law which guarantees fairness and consistency. And that's what we want. It's a high burden to have, but every one of you is capable of carrying it forth and executing it well. 
and I have every faith and confidence that that will be the case. Just keep running it through your mind. Open mind, no conversations, um, no social media, no nothing. I just have to be kind of a, a eunuch about all this. You can't look that up either. <laughs> and finally, I hope you all have a wonderful <coughs> evening. Come back 10 till 9, and we'll get started again. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you so much. Uh, notes need to be signed.